for the Greenway. Whatever that may turn out to be. But let's go back to February 25th of last year, Larry, and Tulane at home. That's the shot we just had a moment ago by Honeycutt that puts them on top. And then almost a year ago, the heroics on the road for Burton. That was the big basket game since then that went down in New Orleans. Well, we're down to it right now. Cincinnati needs a basket down one, and there's about six seconds difference between the game clock and the shot clock. And, you know, and that shot kept Tulane out of the NCAA tournament. They went to the Conference USA tourney, and they were blown out in round one by Louisville, 98-79. Went to the NIT, won a couple of road games at Auburn and Minnesota, home at Illinois State, lost Nebraska, beat Bama in the NIT, but they wanted the big dance. And they've got a chance for a major win on the road tonight. Yeah, this is a tough, gritty performance by the Green Wave tonight. They came in here in a very hostile area and played well. Five-second differential between the clocks. Kenyon Martin, tough defense. Jody Nelson. And we've got a push inside. Oh, I'll tell you what's big right there. We had one official, Tommy O'Neill, had called a five-second count. Frank Gagliano overruled him and said it was a pushing foul. It's on Rayshard Allen. Martin cannot get rid of the basketball. That's on Jody Nelson. It'll be his fifth. So they lose a big presence in there at 6'10". And Bobby Brandon's coming back in for Cincinnati. We haven't seen him in a long time. He picked up his fourth foul almost 13 minutes ago. Daniel Martin, not good from the line this year. Is now tie game. Don't forget after Sports Center, we're going to send you to the Big West, Nevada, and Long Beach State. Fair in hand, good field goal shooter James Cotton, the top scorer in that league for the Long Beach State Club. This is for the lead. They'll settle for the tie. Honeycutt. Final 20 seconds, and it's in Tulane's hands. Yeah, we go to OT or what? They can win it out right here. Honeycutt. He wants Martin. He wants to take him himself. He's waving everybody off. Seven seconds. Down to five. Honeycutt inside the arc. Throws it away. Two seconds remaining. And Cincinnati wants a timeout. question the judgment of that play right there. Honeycutt obviously wants to take him one-on-one. -on -one. I think he might have even been fouled, but when he released the basketball, everybody was standing and watching Gerald Honeycutt instead of reacting to the pass. Watch it again. Now, Honeycutt makes a good move here as he turns and goes back to the inside. See, I think he gets fouled right there. And two players looking at each other. Obviously, Billy Wells could have caught it and had an easy shot. Pretty good defense by Kenyon Martin. And we shouldn't overlook the job that that freshman has done tonight. Five second half points, including a big putback, a big offensive rebound off a missed free throw. And it's amazing when you get into the late stages of conference play, sometimes the heroics come from people you just don't expect. Now, right now, that Cincinnati's got to go the length of the court in two seconds. They've got a chance for one pass, but that one pass has got to get to the mid-court strike. The second one has got to be in the hands of the shooter. If we don't go to OT, Sports Center's coming up shortly. Oh, I think the chances are real good we're going to head to OT. Honey cut a mixed bag tonight. 16 points, six boards, but look at the turnovers. I don't think I've ever seen a single player have that many turnovers in one game. Well, usually you're not good enough to stay in to get 10. The coach is as you sitting next to him. Here we go, 94 feet in two seconds. Can Cincinnati do it? Don Rutledge instructing Bobby Brandon. No pressure on the inbounds thrower. Watson catches it! Cincinnati wins! They're going to wave it off, maybe. Did he get it away in time? The shot clock still says 0.2 remaining. The game clock, that is. So the basket evidently does count. 
the game is simply not over. They got it down so fast, they didn't even need two seconds. What a catch by Fortson. I've got to wonder if he didn't push off a little bit. Watch this. Brandon throws. He is so wide open. He definitely got the shot away in time, looking at the shot clock that was moving. We're going to have to clear some debris off the floor. Looks like some ice cubes found their way out there, which could be terribly dangerous. We're going to have a little bit of a pause here while the ball boys do some housekeeping. The clock shows 0.2, and Perry Clark wants to use his final timeout. at the end of this play. I mean, how about that throw? How about the pass by Brandon? You work on those things in practice. You try to do them correctly. The ball, when it works, it's big. How appropriate that a guy out of Moeller would throw the touchdown pass. Usually, he's been on the receiving end of those. What a pass by Bobby Brandon. Now the officials, Rutledge, Scagliata, and O'Neal will huddle. Cincinnati came dancing out on the floor. You know what? I'm wondering. I'm wondering if Perry Clark is not asking for a technical foul for the players leaving the bench. Uh -huh. Coming out on the floor before the game is over. It's incredible that they could score 94 feet with a layup in 1.8 seconds. Clark wants the tee, and if he gets it, this place will go nuts. You know what? They're going to call the coach over. Huggins. turn of events this would be. You can watch Bob Huggins' reaction and know what's going to happen here. And it doesn't look good for Cincinnati. I think that's what's going to be called. There it is. That's exactly what I thought. You cannot leave that bench. There was still time left on the clock and the players left the bench. Watch again. The catch by Fortson. See the time left on the clock. And the whole team's on the floor. Now they've got to hit the free throw or get some kind of miracle with point two left. Honeycutt, maybe a little too little too late. They get possession. They got to tip it in, Larry. Look at the one guy that did not come in. Damon Flint stayed back. He didn't go out. He just cheered. 65-64. They don't even have time for a shot. It's pretty much got to be just a tip. If anybody catches it and comes down, the game's over. Now Cincinnati wins. An anxious moment for Huggins. What a ball game in Conference USA. Cincinnati finally gets that great win, Larry, that they've been thirsting for. Well, you can see the respect the two coaches have for each other right there. That was a terrific basketball game, and Bob Huggins finally gets the win he wants, and Tulane gets their first loss at Conference USA. Cincinnati wins at 65-64 at the shoe tonight in a thrilling Conference USA battle. Center is coming up next with Keith Oberman and Dan Patrick. And for Larry Conley, Bob Carpenter, this has been a presentation of ESPN, the worldwide leader in sports. Good night from a very...